Hey everyone, John Lorden here. Welcome to a special episode of Brain Scratch Searchlight. This is an update episode and we're going to look at two cases that we have covered before and talk about the latest developments. In one of these cases, we have an answer of where the missing person actually is. Let's go ahead and get started with that. Here is the thumbnail for the original episode, Where is Sam Davis? And this was a little special because um, typically I will do an episode kind of covering the media first, and then if family wants to come on, I'll invite them on. Uh, here, we kind of did it all in one, and we brought Carol, uh, Sam's mother, on the channel right off the bat. Now, I have been in somewhat regular contact with Carol. Um, I talked about this on a video I released, I think just a few weeks ago, actually. Many of you out there were very concerned and, and Carol really took to Facebook and really share, started sharing a lot of her frustration and emotions, just very raw, open emotions there. And many of you were worried about her. Um, I literally had some people reach out to me and just ask, hey, John, can you just check in with her? Um, and I did. And and we've maintained some decent contact um, through that. Now we have this development, and that is that Sam Davis has been located. Charlotte Mecklenburg police believe the remains have been found of a 26-year-old Charlotte man missing since last July. And this is an article from February 15th, 2019. Police say they are awaiting positive identification, but they believe they are the remains of Sam Davis. There were no visible signs of how the person died and an autopsy is planned. Police say a teacher at nearby Croft Community Elementary School made the discovery after chasing a ball into the woods, but thankfully no children saw the remains. Um, so I did reach out to Carol. Uh, she responded to me earlier today and basically she is, I guess the best word you could say is relieved. She's relieved that there is no boogeyman in this story. Um, it doesn't seem like anyone harmed Sam. Um, we still don't have the cause of death really determined. Even the official identification still hasn't been done. I keep looking for updates on that. But uh, Carol is very clear that um, she is more than confident that this actually is Sam. So here on the Find Sam Davis Facebook page, we do have a post directly from Carol. 33 weeks ago today, Sam disappeared into thin air. Yesterday, he was found, and not in the way we were all hoping and praying for, but for the first time in eight months, I know where he is. He isn't in danger, and he isn't sad. We are broken, and we are hurting. The identification still has to be made official, but we are more than certain it is Sam. I will post more information as it becomes available. Thank you to hashtag Sam's army for walking this difficult road with me. I love you, Sam, signed Sam's mum. And here we can see several pictures of Sam as a young man. And it's just including this really touching one of him hugging his mother. Um, it's heartbreaking when cases take this turn. And I am thankful that Carol has an answer. And to her own point, I'm thankful that there doesn't seem to be any violence that was conducted to Sam. So um, in terms of her emotional landscape, this is probably definitely not the outcome anyone's hoping for, but an outcome that might be a much easier path than if something bad had happened to him um, by the hands of someone else. But I did see this other post here from February 16th that I wanted to share with you guys as well. Closure sucks. It stole my hope signed Sam's mom. And once again, it's just, um, it gives you so much insight into it's, it's so weird because I even feel weird doing it here on the channel. And I, I constantly wish that these people will have their closure so that, um, they don't wonder where their missing loved one is. And then we have a case like this where we find out the answer the answer isn't what we all wanted, but you see that the emotional landscape still isn't quite as easy as, well, now I have my closure and I can move forward. It is a bumpy road. It's a different route that everyone has to take. Um, and do you even really know where the end destination is? What is Carol's end destination for how she's feeling about Sam right now? 
You know, she has to appreciate the time that she had with him, but I'm certain that she feels robbed of the time that they could have still had together moving forward. Uh, so it's just a very, very tough thing. And I'm just thankful that there were so many supporters uh, that were following the Find Sam Davis page. And like I mentioned, so many people that cared so much specifically about Carol that they were still uh, reaching out to me. And finally, one more update. Uh, we are working on Sam's celebration of life ceremony. It's going to be March 3rd at 2 p.m. Uh, they have an address here. It's at in Huntersville, North Carolina. So if you are in the area, you want to join this uh, celebration of life ceremony, show your respect, show some support for Carol, please come to facebook.com forward slash find Sam Davis, and you'll find all the details there. If you can't make it, um, they are actually planning on doing a Facebook live of Sam's life celebration as well. So you could come to find Sam Davis and experience it there. And Carol, just uh, once more, I'm here for you. If there's anything I can do to help you through this in any way, please reach out. Please let me know. Um, I, I, I can't imagine this. I'm thankful you have your answer. I'm really sorry that that answer comes with so much pain and heartache and a, a much different road than many of us have to face. But once again, there's a lot of people that care about you. Put me on that list and please let me know if you need anything. So some searchlight cases come to an end, which I kind of feel like we hit with Sam's case. I know we still have a couple of unanswered questions, uh, maybe a cause of death. I don't even know if that'll be released publicly. Uh, certainly at least a solid um, official identification needs to happen there. But if anything changes around any of that, I'll let you guys know. Other brain scratch searchlight cases shift out of searchlight territory, being about a missing person, into brain scratch territory being an unsolved mystery, usually an unsolved homicide. And is that what we're talking about with the updates today in terms of the Cheryl Coker case? Possibly. Let's go ahead and continue with an article here at abc22now.com. Police say they have identified a suspect in the case of a Riverside woman who's been missing since October of 2018. Cheryl Coker was last seen dropping her daughter off at, his, at school on October 2nd. Coker's vehicle was found abandoned the following evening. The vehicle, a 2016 Toyota Highlander, was found locked and all of her personal belongings, including her purse, driver's license, credit cards, and cell phone, were all inside. Police are unable to release any further details about the investigation. So, a bit of a strange uh, release, and that was February 15th. They're basically saying we have a suspect, but they're not saying who the suspect is. Um, I'll have a link to the original brain scratch on this in the description box below, because there's a lot to talk about with this case in particular when you have her vehicle being left in a shopping center. Uh, thankfully, police at that time released, well, I don't know if it was police or if it was just that the media got a hold of it, but some surveillance footage from the shopping center was released showing the vehicle at least pulling in. And even during that episode of Searchlight, I was wondering, how come they don't have you know footage of a person leaving the vehicle? How come we don't have some type of description about that person? It looks like police might have had some of that information and maybe they're releasing it now. We had developments that happened literally on the day that I'm filming this, February 19th. There was a press conference that was held. Uh, I saw it live when it was occurring online. Unfortunately, as of right now, I can't find a full recording of it. I'm seeing some clips of it come up in different news stories and there's a whole bunch of news stories that are just breaking all over the place right now because of what was released in today's press conference. It wasn't really a press conference, it was more like a, a media release, I guess you should say, because um, the detectives that are working on this case spoke to several different reporters and they kind of released their information. It was all, almost a coordinated effort in terms of the timing of the information release, but several different news agencies effectively released their information uh, in, in the same hour. So over here at whio.com, Cheryl Coker case, now homicide investigation, husband named suspect. Uh, yeah, so let me tell you guys, I actually took notes while the conference was going on so I could tell you specifically what I was hearing. And let's get into it. So first of all, they're releasing more footage. They have additional footage from the Kroger's market. Um, 
I don't know if it was from Kroger's in particular, it was a, a shopping center where the vehicle was dropped off. That footage does include someone leaving the vehicle. They described it as a white Caucasian male wearing pretty much all black and pulling a hood up over his head. Detectives thought this was strange. Um, because apparently it was pretty warm at this time of year and why is he kind of wearing so many layers in terms of, terms of clothing and keeping his hood up. Uh, on top of that, there is footage from Spinning Hills Middle School, once again showing this same person walking through. Uh, they released a 911 call, which has a witness that actually saw this man walking through the neighborhood, thought he was strange, um, called it in because he's wondering why is this guy wearing all black walking through the neighborhood. A second person also called in. One of those witnesses talked about the fact that they drove around the block to check this guy out again. And when they passed him, he literally covered his face with both hands. So very suspicious behavior. And then another piece of footage from inside the Kroger's later that night when the suspect, Cheryl's husband, actually showed up and did some shopping on the day that his wife went missing. And isn't it kind of interesting? He goes shopping back at Kroger's. Um, I don't believe her vehicle was actually found at that time. So did he not kind of drive through the parking lot, maybe notice her vehicle out there? I don't know. Maybe it could have happened. Maybe it couldn't have happened. But uh, investigators are being very clear. They do believe that he is involved with this case now, and they're releasing all these new pieces of information because they're looking for more tips. They're trying to get more support from the public in terms of putting this together. We've already got a couple witnesses and the locations of those witnesses that kind of support this is a person that was walking from that shopping center back towards the direction of Cheryl's home, even all the way up to Cheryl's backyard. And who would be doing that? It's very likely it could be her husband, who, by the way, said that he was home through this whole period of time where all this was going on. So investigators talked about a timeline. I'm not going to go over all the points, but the most important points they mentioned were around 7.45 a.m. Uh, they're, they're confident that Cheryl got back home after she dropped off her daughter at school because Cheryl actually made some Facebook posts. So uh, around 7.45 is the last of those posts. And they also have been pinging her phone, so they know that her phone was at her home through that period of time and into later in the morning. Then at 10.52, her phone leaves the home and winds up at Kroger's. And of course, we know the phone is actually discovered in the vehicle. So that period of time between 7.45 and 10.52 is really the potential where um, if her husband did something, it was probably in that period of time. Uh, at 11.13, witnesses see the white guy in all black walking in Cheryl's neighborhood uh, near the school. And it's kind of, it's almost a stroke of luck that her home uh, is so close to a school because those cameras actually picked him up as he was walking through there. Uh, like I mentioned, one witness said that he hid his face in both hands and he was heading towards the backyard of Cheryl Coker's home. Uh, William Coker caught on Kroger's footage later buying groceries in dark clothing, but something else that's really interesting about that footage, here's the image of it again, uh, they notice that it looks like he has a wound above his left elbow. Is that going to come into play if this thing ever heads into a courtroom? Uh, possibly. William Coker is the suspect, and this is a homicide investigation. They were very, very clear about that. Uh, the reporter even asked, is he the only suspect? Is there you know, possibility of other people being looked into at this time? They were extremely clear, no, William is our one and only suspect in this case. Um, Part of the reason why uh, William is drawing so much focus is they mentioned that he didn't really seem to show much interest in the case of Cheryl's disappearance. Uh, and keep in mind, if you haven't seen the episode recently, uh, they filed for divorce. Well, Cheryl filed for divorce about 11 days before her disappearance. Uh, I looked into some of the court documentation. It looks like she might have been going for custody and or child support for one of the children as well. So definitely an emotionally charged time. Um, but even understanding that if she truly went missing, don't you think William would at least contact the detectives every now and then and ask what's going on with the case. Have you found her yet? Apparently he did, 
but only once in a period of four months. So that made them pretty suspicious. They also asked William to take a polygraph on several occasions, and he won't agree to it. Uh, now, you guys, I talk about this on the channel all the time. I don't think that's necessarily uh, an admission of guilt. It's an interesting comment in terms of him possibly clearing himself. But uh, we do have people that are of two very different minds about the validity of polygraphs and if you should ever take one. And like I've said before in videos, after what I've seen, I probably wouldn't take one myself. Um, the investigators said, we're very confident in this case. It, but it is still an open and active investigation. They don't know where Cheryl is. They're still looking for more information from the public uh, to hopefully answer that question and maybe put more of their case together in terms of William's movements or things that happened around William around this time as well. Uh, when asked about the motive, they specifically brought up the divorce, but they wouldn't comment any further in terms of motive. They did say that a key piece of evidence was found that moved this into a homicide investigation, but they won't say what that evidence is. The reporter even asked, is this physical evidence? They won't give up any indicators as to what that is. The reporter then asked, is there possibly some DNA evidence that is related to this case? Can you talk about, is DNA playing a role in any of this? They can't comment on any possible DNA evidence. Um, they also talked about, I guess there might have been some backlash in the social media area about searches or maybe lack of searches that were being done by law enforcement. Uh, they were pretty clear that they really didn't have particular areas to search. You know, the evidence wasn't leading them to a particular location where it's like, well, we should search this park because the car was found near that park. But they did want to note that the public searches uh, that they respected that and that they felt like that was the community coming together, doing what they could, uh, trying to find Cheryl and the public doing that while law enforcement was focusing on the investigation was a good partnership from their perspective in terms of truly helping and trying to locate Cheryl. Uh, they also mentioned that William Coker was cooperative at times early on in the investigation, but over recent weeks and months, that kind of fell to the wayside. Um, and he actually admits that he was at home during that three hour time frame where we suspect something might have happened. And finally, a direct quote from the investigators on this, the timeline and the explanations that William gave us make no logical sense to us. So, uh, I know when I was recording the original episode, it certainly seemed strange to me, uh, seemed like there might be something at play when it came to William. Uh, one thing I haven't seen in terms of them releasing all this information and putting out this new footage and all this is what about an actual picture of William? I went looking through media sources, couldn't quite find one, but on Cheryl's Facebook page, uh, there is a picture of him. I did notice my pal Gray Hughes over on his channel uh, did some coverage on this case and he did pull some photos um, and make them a bit public in terms of William Coker. But uh, I wanted to put this piece of information out there because if we're really looking to jog memories of people in that local area, it could be that his face is the tool to do that as well. And I'm kind of surprised that none of the media groups are really picking up on that and trying to assist in that way. Uh, I, b I believe we'll see more coverage, especially over the next 24, 48 hours on this case. And I do think that um, hopefully some of them will figure that out and start including his image as well, because uh, the investigators were very clear. They still need help. They still need help putting this together. That's why they're putting out this information. I think it's kind of bold that they're doing it in this way where they're basically naming him as a suspect so strongly and then putting out this additional information. I don't know that I've quite seen something like this happen before. The reporter brought up one really good aspect. First of all, should the public be concerned? Because you're telling us that there is a man that potentially murdered his wife and he's roaming around the neighborhood. But outside of that, we also have uh, two daughters, if I recall correctly. Uh, one of them, I believe, has already moved out, but the other one is still 
young and uh, where she is. Is she living with him? Is there any risk to her? Was a big question brought up by the reporter, but police would not give any details or answers to that. So I would like to think they've already got that base covered and she is being protected in some way or is in the custody of some other family or something along those lines. But um, it's, it sure seems like they're trying to shake something up in particular with William and outside of that with the public in terms of putting this case together. And I do hope um, that it comes together for them. They, they seem to have a lot of pieces that are pretty compelling. I'd be really interested to know what this one big key piece of evidence that they're mentioning is um, and how solid is that if they're actually still asking for help and putting out more media to try to elicit more tips. I don't know. But, you know, on some of these cases, I bring up the fact, is law enforcement really using media appropriately? Here, I, don't, I, I feel like they're doing a pretty good job. And initially, when the case ran around, there was some clips released of the vehicle pulling in. Uh, now we're getting clips of the person that's actually coming out of the, ve the vehicle with their theory about who that person is. Um, I don't know. I, I think they're doing a pretty good job engaging the media. And in particular, I was kind of impressed at how that media release went today and seeing all the news organizations that were kind of in this coordinated effort of releasing that information around the same time. And the investigators giving uh, pretty much a one on one interview to a few of these different reporters and letting them ask their questions. Uh, I wish that we would see that more often, quite honestly, in the cases that I cover here on Searchlight. So. I think my hat's off to these investigators. I do wish them all the luck in the world. Uh, and I hope that someone out there maybe has that piece that they're still looking for and will step up and do the right thing. If you happen to be that person, I have contact information in the description box below where you can contact them directly, get that tip in, and maybe make the difference here. Uh, maybe bring Cheryl back to her family, let them pay their respects, uh, possibly even bring a killer to justice. So. I hope that you'll do that. Thank you so much, everyone. I uh, really appreciate you spending some time with me here on the Searchlight Update. Take care, and I'll be back here on Friday with a brand new brain scratch on the Lord and Arts channel. <laughs>